Hey, and welcome to my first series made specifically for YouTube. In this series, we're going to be climbing the rank ladder by focusing on simple but effective ways to be a better league player. Today, it's Iron Elo. If you are stuck in a certain Elo and want to climb out, then going back to basics is a great way to break through your wall. So I did my research, I watched some Iron games on stream, and some more of them off stream, and I compiled a list of five tips that will help any Iron player work their way to bronze, and should also be helpful for players of all Elos if you just want some tips on how to improve. We're going all the way to Challenger at the series, so strap in because it's going to be a long ride. Number one is CS is King. If you are looking to improve, there's few more important resources in League as minions, and I am talking about absolute basics here, and I'm sure since you are searching on YouTube for resources to improve yourself, you are a League player that understands the value of CS. However, most players don't stop to realize just how effective better CSing is. If we take a look at the wiki and see how much value one minion wave has on average throughout the game, we see even at the very beginning of the game, two waves of minions are almost worth an entire kill, not to mention they give much more experience than a single kill does. The major reason solo killing your opponent can be so powerful is you deny them a tremendous amount of minion gold and experience. So what's my advice here? Start off simple, choose your favorite champ you like playing in ranked, hop into a practice tool and start CSing. Practice CSing in the middle of the lane like normal and see if you can hit around 9 to 10 CS a minute by 10 minutes into the game. If you can comfortably reach that, then try to CS while under pressure. A great way of doing this is to CS under tower. Use the teleport option in the practice tool to jump to any waves that are pushing to your side and practice getting as many minions as you can under tower. Another alternative is to hop into game with bots and practice CSing while they harass you. Although I would say this is not really the most consistent practice, the bot AI can be a bit wonky. Once you're happy with your practice, focus on hitting realistic targets in your ranked games. Start small and don't be over eager with your targets, as since it's a team game, things can change and you likely are not in control of every factor that affects your CS all the time. But something like 6 to 8 CS every 10 minutes is a decent number to start with for laners. For junglers, I would say it does heavily depend on your champion choice, but aim for maybe 5 to 7 CS a minute. Make sure you're getting your camps. For all you supports out there, the equivalent for you is placing wards and using your pinks effectively. I don't recommend spending too much time trying to hit a specific number of wards, as game length has a huge impact on when you get your wards or how many you can place. So what I say is vision placed is better than vision saved. Place your wards down and get into the habit of buying pinks and placing them down somewhere as well. The location matters later, just place it. Placing matters more. Number two is aborting bad plays. Like all the points on this list, it sounds a little bit generic, but I think it's quite specific honestly and applies to every single iron game I've spectated. Learn when a play is lost and learn how to give up a losing play and go do something else with your time. Just like in real life, in League, time is money, and if you're investing your time into a play that is already looking bad, well, let me tell you, you're probably not getting a great return on investment there. This sounds a bit abstract, but I used to get this gut feeling in my stomach as I was running to a team fight or a skirmish that was just absolutely doomed. When I started to recognize that feeling and force myself to press tab or double check the fight one more time before I join in, I started to avoid going full Leroy Jenkins into 1v3s thinking I had to do something to turn a bad fight around. Sometimes you just gotta take the punch and move on with life. So what do you do instead of going to the play? Well a really simple idea which usually makes your team's next play easier is just go to the other side of the map, drop your trinket, wards, pinks, clear any of the enemy vision while they're fighting on one side of the map. If the enemy is making a play on one side, try to gain what you can on the other side, within reason, of course. Point number three is to do your best at all times to break yourself out of tunnel vision. This is when you see something or someone on the map on your screen and you completely ignore any other information that might change your decision or make you have to reevaluate your plan. So a tip within a tip, if you play with locked camera, I recommend don't. It will feel really bad at first, but once you get used to the freedom and the map awareness that playing free camera gives you, you will thank yourself. Pressing Y to temporarily lock the camera can be fine still. Be careful doing that while you are walking around to places as coming from base or even just right clicking on the mini map and walking to a fight that's breaking out can turn into a risky endeavor simply because you have your camera locked. Now in my opinion, this is a very tough situation to tackle because 
it depends very heavily on you as a person and how you are going to focus on breaking out of your own tunnel vision. People tunnel vision in different ways and at different points during the game, but it just takes a little bit of self-awareness, maybe write some notes down about I died here because I was chasing or I over chased uh, in the enemy jungle uh, at this point in the game. Anything you can do to kind of help yourself realize when you specifically tunnel vision so that you can start to avoid those situations. Point number four, I call unforced errors, which as you can imagine, that kind of covers a huge portion of mistakes players make in pretty much every elo. So I chose the two most important unforced errors I saw in iron games and I shoved them into this point. Number one is trading when there are tons of minions in the enemy wave. Minions are deceptively strong, especially early in the game, and once you learn your champion's strengths to a decent level, you can maybe selectively ignore this rule, but for now, just count the minions before you go in for a big fight. And for junglers, make sure you aren't ganking when the enemy wave is gigantic and under tower. Remember how much minion waves are worth, and don't waste the golden experience that they give you. Point number two in unforced errors is walking into river or enemy jungle when you don't have any vision or your team isn't in a position to help you. This is a no-brainer and even I sometimes autopilot my way into a bush where three enemy graves simultaneously one-shot me out of nowhere, but it bears repeating. Before you decide to place yourself in danger, start building up the muscle memory to check your minimap and see if your team can actually help you. This is where playing with free camera can really come in handy as panning over the top, mid, bot or jungle to see what your lovely teammates are up to, whether they have health, mana or whether they have pushing advantage. Often it gives you an instant answer to the burning question, should I check that bush that Kha'Zix just walked into? Point number five is pick one to three champions and focus on them only and learn how much damage they do and some matchups for them. This one again sounds very obvious to most people, so I won't talk about why you should do this, but more how you should do this. There are a bunch of ways you can go about this and it's different for each person, but here are a few ideas I came up with. Watch a streamer who plays your champion at a relatively high elo. They will often play the champion much closer to its limits and understand their power spikes quite well watch and learn from them, and implement their ideas into your game and see how they feel. Write down some simple notes about matchups as you play them. It doesn't have to be anything complicated at all. For example, in the Thresh Leona matchup, a really basic idea is that Thresh uses his E to deny Leona when she uses her E. Start out from there and progress to more advanced parts of the matchups as you try things out in-game. Using the same example, once Leona is 6, she doesn't need E to engage, she can just use her R on Thresh, and Thresh has to either flash away or he gets CC'd for 3 seconds. But Thresh can throw Hook out in the animation of Leona R to CC Leona and prevent her from comboing Thresh if he times his Hook right. And there you go, you've just taught yourself something about the Leona Thresh matchup that you can use in your next few games, and it's much better if you write it down, make sure you remember it, and you can quickly reference it whenever you're in those matchups. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. This one is my personal mantra. Do your best to never be afraid of experimenting with your champion's limits. Focus on learning how much you can push the boundaries of what your champion can do. The absolute best way to learn is through experience in League. You miss all the shots you don't take. I guarantee you every high elo player has made a plethora of absolutely 5 IQ plays, which they then learn from and alter their idea of how a matchup goes. The strengths or the weaknesses of a champion also change in their mind. Don't be afraid to fail. And a secondary add-on to this point, use the mute button liberally if your teammates are trying to solve world hunger in the game by typing. Very little productive conversations happen when people are just trying to prove they are right. Save yourself the time and trouble, just mute chat if it bothers you so you can focus on yourself and your improvement. Final bonus tip for everybody, in lower elos some champions just dominate. Generally it's champions that require team coordination to stop them from just taking over a game, or champions that scale quite well as players have less knowledge of how to close games out efficiently. So at the end of most games everybody has full builds and it comes down to rock paper scissors over which team comp wins the mid lane ARAM. So my advice is spend your bans on champions which are terrors in your specific elo. My example. Master Yi, Malphite, Swain in lower levels like Iron, Bronze, and Silver. Something I personally do is tailor my bands to the champions that I cannot control from my own role. 
So another example, if I'm playing Leona, I know for a fact I can save my CC for Master Yi if he dives my backline. So I'm less scared of him than I am of a Malphite completely ignoring me and just pressing R before I can engage, or a Swain who just laughs at me as I try to CC him while he drain tanks his entire health bar back. Those champions are far more annoying as Leona to deal with, so remember is to think about what you struggle to deal with within your champion pool. I hope you enjoyed these tips. If you want more, I stream on Twitch. I have educational gameplay I'm around Master right now on EUS, so feel free to check that out. I answer questions as best I can, and I talk about my decision making as I play. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, maybe some other suggestions about points you think should be on the list as well. And next, we got Silver Elo, so stay tuned.